In Lewis Carroll's famed 1865 children's book, Alice's Ventures in Wonderland, a quirky character is featured who is known as the Hatter. He is described in the tale as mad, and his eccentric behaviour came to earn him the popular title of the Mad Hatter. However, the term mad as a hatter, sometimes used to denote a person with bizarre or erratic behaviour, was not invented by Carroll. Instead, the descriptor is associated with an occupational hazard of the then hat-making industry. The mad and strange behaviours were caused by mercury poisoning. During the 18th and 19th centuries, hatters, also called milliners, used a noxious chemical called mercury nitrate for processing the pelts of small animals like rabbits in creating felts for hats. In those days, there was little protection of workers' health and safety, and it was well known that long-term exposure to the toxic mercury fumes caused damage to the nervous system. The result was that many of these skilled craftspeople suffered from particular physical and mental illnesses. Their symptoms included speech disorders, erratic mood swings, hallucinations, psychosis and tremors, which were known as Hatter's Shakes. The mercury-induced twitching, also called the Danbury Shakes, after the city of Danbury, Connecticut. Danbury was the foremost bastion of the millinery industry during the 19th century and was dubbed the hat capital of the world well into the 1920s. It was then that the demand for headwear declined with the rise of covered vehicles such as trains and cars. Workers' rights also became important and in the US the use of mercury in felt production was finally banned in 1941. Historians have theorised that Boston Corbett a hat maker who dispatched President Abraham Lincoln's assassin may have sustained mental health impairment caused by his mercury exposure. Corbett was a professional milliner from a young age. Following the tragic loss of his wife and child in childbirth, he converted to Christianity and became a religious fanatic. However, his faith was characterised by erratic behaviour, which researchers attribute to a background of probable mercury poisoning. Corbett's religious zeal caused him to proselytise amongst his fellow workers, grow his hair long like Jesus and take up street preaching. His eccentric behaviour became dangerous when in 1858 he performed self-castration with a pair of scissors as a means of suppressing his libido. In 1861 he enlisted in the Union Army to serve in the American Civil War. Again, his behaviour caused him problems as he persisted in sermonising amongst his troops, even reprimanding the superiors for bad language. He landed in the lockup for insubordination and was even court-martialed and destined for execution until the sentence was reduced and he was discharged from the army. However, Corbett immediately re-enlisted and in 1865 found himself in the 16th New York Cavalry which had been sent to track down President Lincoln's assassin. After slaying Lincoln on April 14, 1865 at Ford's Theatre in Washington, D.C., Confederate sympathiser John Wills Booth had gone on the run. By April 26, Corbett and his regiment had Booth surrounded in a Virginia tobacco barn. The Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton, had given strict orders that the fugitive was to be captured alive. However, Corbett later admitted to disobeying orders and claimed responsibility for the downing of Booth. Again, he was arrested and court-martialed, but on given his questionable account of events, was pardoned by Stanton and called a patriot. Other witnesses contradicted his story and the farmer and his son even swore that Corbett did not even reach for his gun. However, he was generally acclaimed as a hero by the public and press for his part in avenging the president's untimely demise and rewarded him with a princely financial sum. Despite them returning to employment as a hatter, Corbett was regularly fired for stopping work to pray for sacrilegious colleagues. He still operated as a roaming preacher and even gave public lectures about the Booth incident, complete with lantern slides. However, he was increasingly discredited and ostracised due to his incoherent ramblings, paranoia and erratic behaviour. He got into several fights and in 1887 was committed to an insane asylum after turning on officers to Kansas State House where he was working. 
15 months later, Cobbett was able to escape the asylum on horseback and apparently lived out the rest of his days as a solitary homesteader in Pine County in eastern Minnesota. <laughs>